we have a lot of subs going on in here tonight. What's the vibes tonight? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Uh, OJ is a part of my night routine. What what is that I see? Ash? I'm not ashy. I don't know. Like I'm never ashy and when people call me ashy, I feel like that's just wrong, you know? Like that's very disrespectful. But just in case, so I don't lick my lips like last time, let me just um put on my bistex. They think all black does ashy. Thank you, I appreciate that. I stole this banana from my father in my father's room. I seen it. I'm like, yo, I'm fake jacking this. Thank you, um, your father. Your father is crazy. Tell me why somebody gonna ask me where I got my shirt from. Because they liked it. Then they gonna clown on me of where I got it from. You got it from Burlington? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I made a joke for somebody just now on the low. But, um, I don't know. I feel like... Because, okay, say you have a nice shirt, right? And it's from Burlington. It's not even that, like, I'm not going to go in Burlington, but, like, I'm not going to go in Burlington because sometimes it just be too much, like, aunties in there. But now I mean the shirt bad. Curry Assassin. Look at this nigga. This nigga said, Mimi, you're lucky. Mimi, you're so lucky it's you that said that. Games, my heart. I was telling Desi, bro, bro, you know, I'm gonna call up my friends, bro, and I feel like I feel down because I called like three niggas today and nobody answered. Let me call Desi to just finish it off. Oh, Mendisa called me. What the fuck? I didn't even see Mendisa called me. I don't even know if she's doing something right now at this time. Inappropriate things at this time. Playing with this zzz at this time. How you call me then I call you? Yo, y'all niggas be feeling like y'all celebrities. Like, how you call me then I call you five minutes later then you don't answer? I wanna block people, bro. I'm not perfect, bro. What she talking about? Then Mendy's talking about some I don't deserve no no missed calls at this point in my life. Yo, what's up with you? Hold on. <laughs> like, she's. Yo, man, this is a clown. Like, she really. And her phone is on DD now. Yo, I can't deal with women, bro. I can't deal with women, bro. Skin out your pum pum. Skin out, skin out, skin out, skin out. Did I see that video where the nigga was humping on the on the tree? OJ, I was trying to give you some tea. You and this tea, bro. What's the tea, bro? Me and Desi was on Val. Where you was at? My computer can't handle Val. That's the best way I can say it. What's the tea, bro? I have nothing to say, bro. Like, come on now, bro. It's 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 turning into a real FaceTime at this point. We just gonna stare at each other, bro. Let me go to my notes. Cold tea. Let me braid your hair for you. You can pay next time. Woman, how old are you? And 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 and. How old are you? That's one. How old are you? If you're from the Bronx, I'm gonna kinda, you know, just be kinda questionable about that. Safety. Z -z 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 -z. Nigga trying to see his specs. Did you see the TikTok I sent you, OJ? No, gang. Did you restart your PC? Fuck you. <laughs> really change the way I see life. I'm forever grateful. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, bro, watch some shit. Bro, can I get some tea and just laugh at something, bro? What's up with y'all niggas? You know what I feel like? I feel like a lot of you guys have embarrassing moments and y'all don't want to tell me. Just, bro, niggas don't know it's y'all, bro. It's just our username, bro. Tell me, bro. Tell me, bro. Let's watch SpongeBob. <laughs> no. Yo, I'm thinking, everybody in the Discord, we should all take parts to make a, 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 a GMTP song. No matter how bad or how funny it is. But the goal is for it to be funny. <laughs> a GMTP Caribbean song. <laughs> Yo. See, my ex cheated on me. Oh my god. Let me call this girl one more time, bro. And I'm sending her the and I'm sending her the thing, bro. And she acting like she don't see. What's up with her, bro? I see that. 
Well, I'm making fun of my life. Call me. What's up with you? What's up with you? Guys, I think I just want to vent today. I'm very worried about my love life, you know? I'm not going to lie. I'm very worried about my love life, like, at this point in life. I know I'll be like, I don't care, but it's about to get cold, so I care. <laughs> I care, bro. I care, bro. This is the first day my AC wasn't on, so I, I'm starting to care. And it's like, bro, like... Don't say nothing, walk. He's smiling already. Don't say nothing, walk. I'm streaming, but can you tell the T without saying names? Yeah. Yeah. I needed tea. I was um dehydrated. I stand link up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, put niggas on tea, bro. Hold on. I have nothing. I'm dry the fuck out, bro. <laughs> you have nothing to tell you. <laughs> I have nothing, bro. I have nothing. The guys, though. I linked to a nigga one time, and he pushed me out the car when I told him I didn't want to fuck. It hurt so yeah, bad, and I'll never forget that shit. Be careful with these men. Jai, I love you. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me hear this now, Mindy, sir. Tell me all the tea. Just don't call no names. The tea about right now? Everything. Like, what I, was going, what I was calling you for, it's too hot. Is that like... It's too fresh. It's too fresh. What? It's too fresh. Oh, come on, it's too gang. Fresh. It's too fresh. What you mean it's fresh? Let it sit in the cold for two minutes and then tell the tea. No, bro. It's not something... Nah. No. <laughs> let this shit marinate. You do. You won't imagine. How bad is it? Is it like somebody like... Ah. Somebody got an STD? No. <laughs> 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 yo! Yo! <laughs> oh, oh my. <laughs> yo! Put niggas on T game. Which one? Is a whole. How close? How close is the person to us? Are they friends? Friends or acquaintances? Who the? F that's who. Got, that's who got it. No, it's it's worse. His. The only thing worse, the only I'm, I'm in it right now. I can't. The I only can't. thing, but let's okay. So it, give me okay. So let me work with you now. If I catch it, you gotta agree. Okay. The only thing worse than an STD is a girl cutting somebody dick off. That's one. Two. I'm involved. But you see, you're not a tree, so this is very hard to just try to get some information. Went through phone. Caught up? No, like delusion. Jack in you? I don't know. Message was on sent. Oh, you got a man on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you got a man. So my, you got a man on your hands. What are y'all talking about? Oh, they, they're, 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 no, they're gonna take They're it lace. Them. I'm they seeing new on. life. Like they're lace. Like they're. <laughs> They're talking, bro. <laughs> Nobody said stalking. You said talking. So, um, so, so, so what? This is like a revealing emotions thing? Yes. But I didn't even know what was going on. I've been oblivious. OJ, you know my life. But, you, okay, that's cap now. 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 Cause what you, you mean? I feel like that's cap because I feel like if a nigga like you always gonna know. No, it's not even about that. We haven't been talking. How am I supposed to know anything? Something just tell me. If I talk too much, I'm... he don't watch my streams. You know, he don't watch. No, it's not about that. Like, I'm not gonna lie.
Mandy saw. Okay, we, we. This like, is this is the tea I, I can't talk about on stream. It's so disgusting, bro. Like, this, this is a tea. I'm sitting here just reviewing papers, and the papers were reviewed, and I realized I missed a few margins. But I didn't even know where they Mendisa, I I don't wanna beat around this tea. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call you after and you give me a <laughs> you give me a time mark of when I can say it. Okay, but just let it think because I'm still thinking, but get call me. Okay, okay. Let me say it. What the fuck? Am I holding no tea, bro? Basically some nigga from a long time ago trying to spin. <laughs> he trying to spin but like I can't, I can't, like, it, uh, I can't say that, I can't say why it's very hot, because y'all don't know the background of the nigga. Which lady texting me? Lady, what type of, why this lady sending me bare fat people? You think because you're cute, you can't send me fat people? Hold on, what's going on today? Bro, what are you sending me? This ghetto business. Yo, bro. Yo, bro. I'm putting my phone down, bro. Niggas don't appreciate OJ, bro. Niggas just call me to tell me tea, but niggas not checking up on OJ, bro. Listen to, to Bayesian drill music. Bro, what the fuck are we doing, bro? Let's listen to Haitian drill music. That'll get me in the mood. I'm not in the mood right now. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. Yo. One thing about it, don't ever play yourself and say niggas don't check on you. Look how I watch your stream and see you talking shit. <laughs> niggas not worried about you bro real talk like niggas don't even really have too much to say to you game worry about your tea bro Okay, I can't judge. I can't judge. I, I thought I was gonna hear some shit. We I thought I was gonna hear some Haitian English, some shit. We do do um baby 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 um WhatsApp. Like I thought I was gonna hear something like that. But if I cannot decipher, then it don't make sense. Hold on. Né à Mira Brown, nec fond des nec. T'inquiète, je connais l'histoire. Il continue à vendre des nec. J'ai déjà vu des gens vivant brûlés. Avec les. But why are these niggas hiding their face? What's going on? What's going on? So this is not even Creole. What the fuck are we doing? We are a lost cause. I have no motion. You know what you know what it is, bro? This is what's going on in my life, bro. I tell you now. This is the longest I probably ever went without Bro, let me tell you something. The things, the advice that I give y'all, I really be practicing it. You see what I'm saying? Like, I would not be telling y'all to get on y'all stuff and, and just limit yourself to an extent. Let me look at this TikTok, though. Limit yourself to an extent. I'm practicing it. So while I'm practicing it, it's like... Outside. Yeah. This is the longest I have ever went without no pum pum, bro. I'm not gonna lie, bro. And I feel like I'm turning into a madman, bro. I feel like I'm waking up angry, bro. 
I'm waking up angry, but I'm trying to discipline myself. I'm really trying to discipline myself, but it's hard, bro. It's hard, bro. And 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 what the fuck is this nigga talking about, Nick? Move, look, Mister Move, look. OJ got big lips. Move blocked. Who is this nigga? First message ever. You just making me uncomfortable, bro. Can't even vent, bro. Bro. But I really want to get. I just, I just, I just. One thing that I can't say is that I feel a boost and a, um, my mood being improved. Od, like, I say energy. I say energy. I feel a boost in energy. Yeah, I even peeping like the belly was banging. The belly not even banging like that no more. Don't even play like the belly not even out like how it, bro. I'm gonna get so arc. I'm gonna get so arc like I've been doing beer, beer. Bear push-ups to Kevin Samuels in the morning, like y'all niggas don't even know. Belly not there, like don't fuck around. You see, you s no talking, no talking, no talking. Motion belly. So you see, I'm getting right. Yo, when the belly jokes is gone, and my braids are fresh, I don't want to hear anything. But I've been working, bro. See, what I'm saying like, I gotta act bad next summer. Next summer. I need my tattoos, everything tatted up. I just lift 20 pound weights, it work. Yo. What's the show? Thank you. Hey, Migambino donated $5. Thank you. OJ, I have the most insane show for you to watch. I watched another streamer watch it and I was speechless. At first, I thought it was weird, but it's definitely entertaining and eye opening. The name is Black White and it's all on YouTube. Can you send it please? Yeah, I can't come with a plane every day. I feel like that's why sometimes I'm grumpy. I feel like it's hard to just go on this journey, you know? But you know, I can say I'm celibate. Hey, 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 hey. Biki de sangbo. Somebody, somebody, please tell me what Decides Yambu mean. <laughs> oh my God. Start doing your core and arms. I ain't gonna lie. Ray, if you in here, I just soon spin the gym with you, bro. See how I'm saying? Let me look at the YouTube video. See what you're talking about. My name so somebody told me to watch Black White. Y'all wanna watch that? Dikki Cheer the 100. Oh my god, you got motion like that? Y'all yeah, yeah, know what it is? Kaya, thank you. Y'all yeah, yeah, jacking this is good? What am I doing? Got me watching this old nigga. I'm pretty suspicious. Oh, this is about... This is about... Uh, okay, like racism... I want to, I, I look you in the laugh. I'm not going to lie. Can we watch something that I could just laugh to, bro? The show is crazy. Or is this all the way entertaining? If it's all the way entertaining, you know, then we can go there. But, you know, it's low key funny. I seen that Kai stuff. Yeah. It's entertaining. It's funny. Okay, okay. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. My name is Bruno, and I became a black person. Get the fuck out of here. I won't even engage. Get the fuck out of here. What? Get the fuck out of here. Y'all niggas... Yo, I really can't expect what... what Like, y'all niggas are so random, it's insane, bro. <laughs> yo! Look at this nigga! Yo, but now I'm now I'm interested to violate this nigga. No, now I'm interested to violate this nigga. Prepare myself for this fuckery. Where my water at? My name is Bruno, and I became a black person. No one knew that I was actually black when I had my white makeup on. For six weeks, two families, my family, the black family. 
got together in a house in the valley in LA and we decided to swap races. We'd go into makeup and become the opposite race. We became black, they became white. Then we moved in together. We're talking living together, you know? It's not like, you know, we're gonna see them for a little party, get together, and they go their way, and we go our way. No, at night, we all live under the same roof. The whole experience, it opened my eyes, just made me more aware of my race. I'm a pioneer in this, because this is something that's never been done. Changing color to see what it would be like was completely transformative. We got jobs, went shopping. Hey, white man. We would go out together. He's the honky. We were undercover. We had hidden cameras. We were sneaking around. Hello. <laughs> we did it all. We're the Wurgles, a uh, typical white American family from Santa Monica. I just wanted to really poke into the issue of race and see if any flames would emerge. My mindset in life, I get from my father. As an immigrant, came to this country starting from scratch and demonstrated that you get what you want by working extremely hard. I know played this game before, I don't know how to play. I was curious to see how the world would react to me as a black person. Many times I was shocked. I feel racist. We are the Sparks family. We're just a typical black family from Atlanta. White family here, Vietnamese here, white here, Mexican here, very diverse, but just like the UN, baby. Growing up in Michigan as light skin, green eyes, uh, big afro back in the early 70s, it was tough. I had to fight the darker skinned blacks because I was too light, and then I had to fight the whites because I was too dark. So I had racism from both sides. Being white felt different. Wow. Very different. I was raised in a very liberal home, and my folks were involved with the civil rights movement. So I had compassion for people who have suffered. By putting on another skin, I wanted to have a sense of what it's like to be black. I was raised by two hardworking parents who taught me to not use race as an excuse. You, as an adult, should know that you just don't call a woman a bitch. I didn't know that. I really didn't know what to expect, but I didn't know it was going to be that intense. She's going to be crying a lot. She keeps f***ing me, though. Shit. I mean, I like it, but it's not something I would wear. Oh, I thought you liked it. I would love to sit here and say that everything was just great, but it wasn't. Oh, you have lost your damn mind. You can't act black. I'm kind of waiting for somebody to go, hey, nigger. You know, but, but is that going to happen? But it's not going to happen. You know, that word was still, you know, like dynamite. I got is losing me i'm not gonna lie this lost me i don't even know how this up these niggas is mad comfortable am i like bro i might be gonna see what's on my mind got angry sometimes at being misunderstood i don't want to have to choose my words you want to sit on the little lily white pedestal and say shit is not happening in the world and that's bullshit bruno don't piss me off what happened between bruno and myself was really challenging. You have these judgments that I think you have no right to have. I knew we had differences going into the project. I didn't know how great those differences were. What are you gonna do about it? I don't know how we're gonna make it. We did something no one else has ever done. <laughs> I don't like being made up. And none of us will be the same again. Please don't believe the hype. Everything in the world ain't black and white. Everybody ain't a stereotype. Just because I look wrong, I'm about to do right. Black as midnight or bright as snow white. You better do me right or I'ma have to take flight. Put you on nice, blast on you twice. If you a zebra, better come out them stripes. Bun, blast on you twice, come out your stripes. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not, I'm, I'm reporting that. Matter of fact, I don't feel good today. So, the fuck is that? This video need to come down as a whole. Oh, they lucky. I'm not paying for ads and I'm not signing in either. They're very lucky. Please don't believe the hype. Everything in the world ain't black and white. My name is Bruno, and during this project, I'm going to become a black person, along with my family. 
My name is Rose. I'm 17 years old and I'm a white girl. It's just so exciting to be a part of this project. I don't know what to expect. I'll pick up some other affectations and characteristics and maybe end up walking a little differently. My name is Carmen and I'm going to become black. I'm getting spray painted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning black gradually. I'm Brian. I'm 40 and I'm going to become a white man. I'm still amazed that all those colors make me white. I see browns and blues and greens and reds, but the finished product, I look like a white guy. I'm Nick and I'm 16 and I'm going to be transformed into a white dude. My name is Renee and by changing the color of my skin, I will be able to see what it's like to be white. I've never experienced what it's like to be treated black. I don't know what that means or entails. The transformation is definitely underway. <laughs> I get to learn just how it feels to go out in the world looking black. In my opinion, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> Hello, girl. <laughs> that evil last girl starting to look like... She's starting to look like Brooklyn. Tell me where the... My, yo, she's starting to dead look like Brooklyn. What the fuck? I look... Gang. Yo. <laughs> yo. I look up in the mirror and I'm like, damn, I'm white. Uh, being a former basketball player, I always thought how nice it would be being able to jump, get off the ground, leap, and slam dunk like these guys can. And there's no doubt about it. Uh, blacks are superior, you know, physically, uh, hands down. They're faster, they leap higher. They're just awesome, awesome athletes. That's it. We're done. We're finished. Yes, I do look like a white guy. Totally, totally. Yeah, I think I'll break out the sticks, play a little golf. Awesome, dude. Awesome. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to imagine what it's going to look like to see Renee and Nick for the first time white. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> you wow. look like, Man. um, you I look as white as you. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? I should be laughing at you. <laughs> that is too funny, though. Uh, <laughs> out here, you know, we got some business to take care of. I don't think so. <laughs> Not my type. <laughs> okay, you can't take this the wrong way because remember, we're in makeup, but I mean, you can look anything like a guy that I would be attracted to. Come on, white girl. Come on, white girl. I don't, I don't want to. Come on, white girl. <laughs> Just a <Come> pack. <laughs> You be scared. That was weak. I know, I know. Oh my god, that is so strange. Oh my god. Yo, bro. I can't see nothing this stream, bro. I can't see nothing this stream. Like, it, it, it. That, this, these clips is gonna carry over to when I'm dirty. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be sad in the stream. God, Bruno. It's nice. Yeah, I, I love black. I mean, visually and somehow heart wise, there's a warmth. Yeah, you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you look like a really nice man. <laughs> oh my God. God, it's just really beautiful. That's just like I'm in love with this woman. Beautiful. Okay, so when do we get to see Nick? So, because now I'm really curious I know. now. I know. <laughs> 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 what? Wow. Wow. Nick. Wow. wow. You look good. Wow. You're sexy. Is that what you said? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Look, look, look like at those a, shoes and everything. Look, you almost look like Michael Jackson. Oh, you had up? Lift your head up. Lift your hair. Look at that. Look at Joy. The mustache. Look at your teeth. Look at your pimples and everything. No, no, he already had that. Uh, he already uh, had that. He tried. tried. <laughs> <laughs> You're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so scary. Woo. Beautiful, I'm sorry, I'm amazing job. Down. You totally look like a little black girl. Beautiful job. Do I look like me? No. No? Would you recognize me? No. On the street? No. Wow. 
amazing. Yeah. Hi, Rose. Hi. You look great. Let me see your hair. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. We look like twins, huh? <laughs> Today was like the experimental day. It was the yay or nay. Will this work? I'm very confident I can pull this off. I went golfing as a white guy because that's a predominantly white sport. I wanted to see how I would get treated. You have a pack of teas as well? Yeah. Good deal, good deal. Okay, well said. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. Oh, terrible. I talk to people that I wouldn't normally talk to. Oh, you got a pretty good stroke going there, so I come over to see what you're doing here, so I can try to straighten my game like that. So, there you go. You know, we're shopping for clubs, so we're just interested to see what kind of clubs you're using. Yeah, I have these so. custom made at some little shop down in Burbank. Oh, okay. I feel very accepted as if I was one of their own. Yeah. I appreciate your time. Your name? I'm John. John Brian White. My first time as a black girl, I went to South Central. Going undercover in the black world is amazing. People were talking to me like, my sister. <laughs> See, Lee was trying to holler. What? Holler means he's trying to go out with you. Oh, really? Yeah. He was liking you, like digging the way you look. You know. <laughs> look at you trying to get a boyfriend. <laughs> when I'm in black makeup, I wasn't like scared. If anything, I was just like, I look black. People regard me as a black girl. It was selling. I needed a pair of shoes, so I went shopping. As a white guy, I'm relaxed when I'm shopping. I put on my white makeup, and I'm having fun. OK, and three questions for you. I like these two here. I okay. uh, kind of like that one better. What size um, do you wear? Uh, 11. And then the most amazing thing happened. The guy actually took my foot and put it in the shoe and put a shoehorn in the back to make sure my foot slide in. That feels good. This kind of shoe should be pretty comfortable right from the start. Mm -hmm. I have never in my life had someone, you know, they, they come out and give me my shoe, but I've never had anyone actually unlace it, open it, shoehorn the back, and slide my foot into the shoe. Is this what the white guys get? This is all the benefits they get? It's never happened to me black in 40 years. The first time I go and buy shoes is white. I have it done. I was like, wow, the possibilities are endless. Over the next several weeks, my family is going to be living with the white family. I'll have the opportunity to discuss the experiences that I have with the family that I'll be living with, uh, actual black people. My expectations of living with a white family, uh, I, I was just hoping going in that they were nice, um, that they were clean. I'm pretty much open-minded, just like, okay, let's just see what happens. Oh my God, guys. Oh, oh my God, this is it. We're meeting them. Home, <laughs> sweet home. I have no idea what it's going to be like to live with a black family. I have the sense that I'm heading into something <laughs> difficult and profound. I think everybody was trying to size each other when we walked in the door. You know, see how their reaction was when they saw us. Were they pleased or displeased or scared? Oh, yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Good, very good. Thank you. Oh when we first met, it was kind of intense. And a basketball. And a basketball. We saw it's all new for everyone. The nerves of not knowing what to expect. Moving into a house with a family we didn't know. In a home we weren't familiar with. I like to come. When I'm getting ready to cook, but the kitchen's clean. Yeah. Yeah. Dishes. Yeah. Renee seems very strong-minded, very clear about what she thinks. Somebody uses the kitchen when they're done, they walk out, it should be just yeah. like they came in. Oh, Bruno, he seemed like he was a, a pretty grounded guy. Yo, who this white nigga going through nigga's fridge, bro? Yo, these niggas need a box in their face, bro. Like, I feel mad, like, my chest don't feel good watching this video. I'm not even gonna lie. It's not a jokey thing, bro. Nigga opening up next people fridge. Like, who the fuck are you, bro? <laughs> nigga said he forgot he was watching me. Like, both the doors cracking it open. Like, who is this nigga? Thought, you know, yeah, I, I would hang out with Bruno. How'd you guys, uh, when you first saw each other, what'd you think? That was intense. <sighs> yeah. Was it? Yeah. When I walk in, 
and he's this beautiful, warm black man. <laughs> I fell in love with him. <laughs> ding, ding. Well, when I first met Carmen, I thought, she's weird. <laughs> she seemed kind of emotional. <laughs> Nick is very <laughs> introspective. He was uh, the quiet one of the bunch. Lock on the door, we don't want the black people stealing anything. <laughs> Uh -huh. My mom and Bruno don't exactly spend a lot of time with black people. Yo, that's why I wish I had beer power, bro. Sometimes I really wish I just had a bigger following to do evil shit like. Let's find out with this nigga's social media right now and his Facebook. So then he can find his location from his Facebook. Then just send everybody to his Facebook to go violate that nigga up to now. And just make the clip blow back up on social media and finish his life. So I think I'm a little nervous that they might say the wrong thing. First thing we had to do was teach each other how to... I didn't say to do it. I didn't say to do it. T.O.S. Pass as the members of the other race. We're going to help each other walk the walk and talk the talk. But I think about it. All right. So we got to help y'all pass the Yeah. I was figuring I would walk in GTA. Again and just basically high five everybody. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. High five everybody. No, I keep thinking there's a something in the walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you think there's not? Right? Uh, 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 just basically. All right, so we gotta help y'all pass black. Everything. Yeah. Uh, I was figuring I would walk in and just basically high five everybody. Oh hell no! Uh, oh uh, hell uh, no! Uh, uh, high five and everybody. You know mm -hmm. No, I, I keep thinking there's a something in the walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you think there's just some kind of let's say mm -hmm. the, the walk now? Yeah. You know, I was thinking kind of, uh, how about a white guy, sort of more straight, mm -hmm. whereas a black was sort of like, just a just little, little, just a little yeah. bit of roll. That's not really bad. It's not just sort really of not really bad. Roll, you know, you know, kind of. And mm -hmm. you know, the biggest thing if somebody come up to you is hand, keep it in the middle, because we don't want none of this touching. Okay, we don't touch. Just come in. Okay, a closed thing? or just just just, it's, It can be open. You know, white guys come and hug like oh, this. Honey. Like this. Straight up and down, nothing to block. All men do that. All men do oh that. Oh my god. Yeah. Do we really want to be like saying, okay, so that's what most black people do, therefore I should do it to blend in? Because I know that like all of us are trying to learn about the other race, but it's so much in the, like the language of stereotype. Mm. I don't know yet if I'm going to feel comfortable putting on an act. I'm comfortable being me. I don't want to just be sending out bullshit. It's all about pulling pulling it off. Somebody say what's up, just say what's up. Don't ask them what they do. <laughs> Would that take you a little bit of back? Yeah, a little bit. So there is a difference in the black and white. Yeah, because I've different. seen white women just come up to me and I was like, what's she want? Why is she bothering me? Why is she asking me all these damn questions? You know, some black people be like, damn, why you want to know all yeah. that? Why are yeah. you all in my business? I think I asked too many questions. No, 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 no. I mean, just, just don't go in there friendly, highly ho neighbor. You know, that's curious. That's a I generally said. held belief. Hell yeah, y'all yeah, very curious. So y'all do a lot of things that everybody don't do. I'll give you all the white things that you're doing, then you'll see it curious. A tornado coming by, a white person coming behind it in a truck. Now it's, now, now it's, now it's a legitimate professional called storm chasing. I'm not chasing the storm. You know what I'm saying? You laughing because you know it's true. <laughs> That's white. Is it your sense that blacks just... Yo, this nigga wanna throw out the hard R so hard. Like, look at this nigga face. Like, yo, this nigga is bitter, but... He and he gonna enjoy getting them wee with it. Like, yo, look at this. Early. Nigga scratching his. I can't even speak. I can't even make a joke. I feel defeated with this type of disrespect, bro. Look down on white. No, we don't no. look down on you. No. It's just your nature is to be more curious than ours. Your nature is to, if you hear a noise, to find out what the noise is. We hear a noise. We wanna. We get. We getting away from the noise, and we're worried about the, what the noise what is, is like. later. I wonder why those, yeah. if those differences tr are, are true, and certainly right here they're playing out. Wow, this is all really interesting. I am never around, or very rarely around, black people. Really? Yeah, and to have Can't this kind you of help. <laughs> <laughs> Were we supposed to coach you all, or ask? She doesn't have to do that because I know how to adapt and get along with white people because that's something that I learned to do because white people are the ones I had to deal with when I had to interview for a job or anything. You know, I know how to communicate with them to get what I want. We interact with whites daily. Black culture has to conform to white society to make it. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. We are in for something. 
We are in for something. What could they do? Oh, that's nasty. You can learn a lot by living with another family. So far, it's been really neat. So far, I've really enjoyed meeting the Sparkses. I've learned a lot. There's like a whole world, a whole community in being black. It's like a secret society with shared experiences and language and customs. Being black is a very subtle thing, you know. Go ahead, uh, yeah. On our first day out, we had a discussion with a moderator about race to help prepare us for focus groups. The goal of the meeting now is to talk about the idea of racism and how do we recognize in other people what they are seeing in us when we are in different skins. It'll, it'll be interesting, and I'm sure it'll happen, where I'll be in, in black and I'll get some attitude from some prick white guy and I won't have all the history of resentment mm -hmm. right. that a black man has and I'll be able to f*** with him. Oh, just, you know, uh, mentally spar with them and go, like, you know, it's just, hey, nigga, you know, I won't oh. get angry. Yo, like, but he not going to say nothing? Nah, nah, but it's like, it's, even I be saying I don't say something, but like, just the way he said it, though, now it's like, gang, you have to say something, bro, you're not around your, you're not around your wife, bro. Look how much times this nigga said that shit like two, three times. Let me pre. I'll just kind of smile. And yo, look at his daughter. Mind you, his daughter is nothing like that. I like the little speech his daughter gave. Myself and go, wow, why'd you say that? Yo, he not even saying nothing. Yo. Nah, why am I judging him when I be moving the same? Because, bro, the amount of times I hear it, bro, I be laughing in situations, but this is not a... I can't... I ain't laughing this one, gang. Nah, gang. When I hear the N-word, my jaws clench up. It resonates with me. You, yeah, you're not getting no pussy tonight. You cannot get no side... No side fuck. No side rum for you. And I know it's just a word, but, you know, what I had to go through... <laughs> This nigga is on timing. <laughs> the sun is on timing. Like, that nigga is analyzing everybody to the core, bro. Like, I want that nigga to really deck off on somebody, bro. Word still gets me. It's powerful. You know, no one's going to just straight, strictly come up and, you know, and say, hey, nigger, or anything like that. Because that kind of racism is really not there today. But now it's more, we won't get the positions that we're qualified for, or we won't get the service that everybody else get. But I honestly, I think that Rose and Carmen and, and Bruno is going to get a lot more out of this than we will because of the fact that white don't have to go through the day-to-day -day small things that you never think about. Like if I go into the mall as a black man, I'm going to be looked okay. at. Right. Or follow. Or follow. Really? <laughs> what if we're at a gathering, all of us are having dinner together, and there are pretty much equal blacks and whites, and then the no. whites leave and y'all start no. driving. No. Driving? Yeah. <laughs> cool. What if we're at a gathering, all of us are having dinner together, and there are pretty much equal blacks and whites, and then the no. whites leave and y'all start no. driving? No. Driving? Yeah. <laughs> See? That's white. That's very white. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> no, get down, mama. That's a pass the grits and chicken. That's a job. <laughs> Today, Carmen and I are going to be black people in a focus group of all black people. It'll be a panel of black people talking about race and racism. I feel totally confident that no one will be aware of the fact that I'm a honky. Bruno walked in before me. I came in as the last oh. participant to this all black panel. I felt nervous, like, are they going to accept that I'm black? It was scary. It was great. I knew that Brian was behind the two-way mirror and he had given me some advice on how to be black. He told me to sort of just kick back, um, don't have great posture, lean to one side and sort of slouch in the chair. I was mindful of not being overly inquisitive. 
What do you see today as the biggest difference between being black and white in America? I mean, when I think of white people, I think uh, ethnocentric. Very much like my way of saying things is the best, most correct way. And anything that's different than that, you know, I don't want to get to know. It's assimilation. You know, it's kind of like as long as we assimilate and do what they do, we're okay. But if we're kind of like off on the side doing our own little thing, you might be a little bit intimidating. It seems like that's just the way it is. This world is dominated by white people, and I don't think it's any way that we'll ever be considered equal. Because so they just talk at you anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm a grown man, and you be having them talk. Hey, get over there. Hey, get this. Pick that up. Hey, get over here. You know, it's like, wait, I'm a man. They don't even talk to their kids like that. There's a world there that I got to have an eye-opening view of. It was pretty amazing um, and very enlightening to experience just a taste of what it's like for the black world. You know, there's a lot of controversy about the N-word and who can use it or whether it should be used at all. Who has experienced an intentional attempt to disrespect you by using that term? That's what I'm trying to get at. Oh, yeah. Have you had experiences like that? Yeah, I used to work as a doorman at a disco, you know, and if somebody came up intoxicated or didn't have the right dress on, you know, they'd say, come on, nigga, you know. Or, you know, a lot more hostile than that. And I just, you know, mm -hmm, yeah, that's right, I'm a nigga. You know, it just wouldn't affect me. And that would be the end of the conflict, just like that. Because I wouldn't give it the power. Mm. The only reason why people call you derogatory names is so that they can inflame you. If you don't empower the people that call you the N-word by getting upset, you win. And the idiot that just called you that doesn't have any power. My main thing is just to be the fly on the wall. But why are you getting the kick out of the scene, they do I still, I still say that same perspective to an extent. Like I'm not, cause I'm not gonna give you a reaction to get to just be like, yo, look at this nigga, look at this how this nigga acting, like look what this nigga. But why this nigga just love using the word? Like that's just irking me. Like every opportunity you get, you using the word again. You don't have to use the word, bro. He getting a real life kick out of it, bro. Niggas like this can't ascend in life. And see how whites act when blacks are nowhere around. I'll be able to, you know, actually hear what they say when I'm not in the room. But I'll actually be in the room. She's walking like a white woman. My name is Brian. I enjoy uh, building computers, uh, things like that. I like fixing things with my hands. My name is Renee, and my hobbies, whoa. <laughs> Swimming, tennis, shopping. How prevalent is racism still in today's society? Uh, you know, I want to think that everybody is treated equally, and you know what? They're not. Um, I had an experience where I was managing a girl who was black, and she had the worst attitude I have ever seen. I wanted to fight her so bad. It had nothing to do with the color of her complexion. Whatever I would have to document to fire her, I'd have to have an even longer list to make sure that we're not sued. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah yesterday. There's a black guy behind the counter, and uh, my friend tipped him and said, put a tip in the jar and said, thank you, brother. And the guy said, watch how you say that. Only black people can call themselves brother or even the N-word. I don't look at a black person and say, I want to do harm. Sometimes there's these innate things that I think have been taught that, you know, I shake someone's hand that's black and my instinct is to wipe it or something. I am very conscious of it afterwards and I feel horrible about it and it takes work to switch that around. When he said that, I was like, wow. Um, the guy just shaking when he was telling us that. You could tell that that really bothered him. I knew that racism was there and I thought I was prepared for everything, but when I actually donned the white makeup, I was shocked. Those focus groups were really eye-opening. I look forward to having someone say, hey, nigga, you know, you're a son of a bitch. I hate you, nigga. And expect me to get all freaked out about it. And I just look at him and go, gee, why, why, why did you call me that? <laughs> And that would be the end of it. We were in the focus group. It was interesting that out of the whole group, yeah. Bruno and used the word yeah. nigger. With the ER? Yeah. yeah. He was the first one to say. They like that word. They like it for some they reason. Like I don't know why. Like when you're black, it's okay for you to say the word then, but when you're white, just 
I think that most white people, not all, would love to say nigga in the presence of black and, and not have any repercussion. Now that we've got the basic knowing where we are and who the sparks are, I feel I can totally focus on the black perspective on issues of race. Very curious to see if I am reacted to differently as black Bruno than I am as white Bruno. I'm in this project to see if black people are just the same as white people. By becoming a black girl, I want to see if I can identify with other black kids and learn about their culture. Today, I'm going out to look for a job as a white Brian in an all-white community. I would like to see it. It will be easier for me as a white man to get a job because I'm white. When they see me, they'll see likeness. It'll be easier for me to fit in. Hey, you must be Brian. Brian. You're here for an interview. I sure am. All right, well, let me just take you over to a, t uh, a table, and then we'll get you to fill out some stuff. Sounds good. Leo's Bar is an all-white neighborhood, and I would like to be a bartender because alcohol brings out the truth. If you're a bartender, if black was brought up in a white surrounding when the patrons are drunk, I think it's much different than sober. You don't have a job now. Um, you haven't had a criminal record. We need to do a background check on you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just, you know, thrilled you guys interviewing me. Give me the chance for this. Well, you know, once you're on, you're part of the family. Right. So, you know. Uh, okay. I like that. Right. Yeah, I got the job. Hey. Thank you for this opportunity. And I promise I won't you. let you down. Oh, I know Same you won't. I know you won't. I know you won't. I know you won't. They told me, welcome to the family. They knew I was white when they said, welcome to the family. I'm in the Leo family. I'm in the Leo family. So I'm white now, so I'm in there. Today I went to the mall and I met Duran and Poetry, who are in charge of a slam poetry class. They knew that I was white, but I was still in black makeup. Do you know anything about that poetry, Jeff? No. We teach poetry workshops. There's so many beautiful poems out there, but they're not performed right. We teach performance and writing skills. I, I like to write poetry, and I've never learned how to. I just, I've written it myself. If you write poetry, we're like, oh, you're in the house. I'm really excited about taking this poetry class because I want to know what it's like to be black. I want to immerse myself in the culture. Do you have any poems like... Like in my head? Or in your head, or do you have or any... Or down that you would have memorized, only because the first class, at least, right, we're going to have everybody, like, read one. something worthy. To, and so it's we can easy, see where you are. Where you are, what, what we need to work on. Wow. And it's easier if you have it memorized. I've got an assignment, and I'm downright feeling intimidated. I've never tried to do slam poetry. It's scary for me to know that I've got so much potential to fail. Anything that'll like speak about you or right. something that you can memorize. Well, I can always do one tonight and just work on it. It'll have to be memorized. Yeah. Okay. And written. Today I went to several car dealerships to see if I'm treated any differently as a black person. I've spoken to black friends, and they'll say that you don't know what it is to be the black man who's looked at with suspicion. Somebody looks at me and they have hatred because I'm black. That will be soul-shaking. Let me get the case for you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate your time. What do we do, honestly, what do we do to our air business today? It's kind of interesting. I was on the lot no more than 20, 30 seconds before somebody would notice me and come right over to me. What if you don't have such good credit? When I tell them that I have lousy credit, they tell me that I'm going to have to put more money down. I think that's rather standard. It didn't seem to me that anyone was uh, keying in on my blackness. In general, I got excellent service, and I'm finding that I'm treated exactly the same, whether I'm black or whether I'm white. How about you guys? What have you learned? So I, learned, I, learned like I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I learned that, you know, as, as a black man, uh, you know, I buy my shoes. They just hand me the shoe and say, here, try it on. But my first day as a white guy, I go and buy some shoes. Yeah. They take my foot and put it in the shoe. But I bought golf shoes out of a golf pro shop before. Didn't happen. So, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it always happens, but it was just my first time. And I was like, wow. At the car dealership, as a black man, what I experienced is I'm getting the reaction from people that I usually get as white Bruno. And that's telling me a lot. From what I hear from you, I don't feel that you're getting the experiences that I go through on a daily. Bruno's been white all his life. 
until these last few days. So he, he doesn't know what to look for or what to expect. If you're not used to it in your daily life, then you're not yeah, going to look for anything absolutely. new just because you have all black makeup. I just think the little things that you never think about is always on our mind as black men. What, what I totally believe is it's the individual, regardless of whether he's white or black. I'm going to come as Bruno as a black man, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show everybody courtesy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with life the way Bruno does, mm -hmm. and I'm going to appear black. My theory is it starts with you know, personal responsibility. You oh, get out of life what you put into it. I come from a place of not expecting to be assaulted by racism. And maybe that's a huge difference. They are so aware of the fact that they are black and that they are separate and they are different. Well, you said, uh, you know, you guys are going to get a lot more out of this than I am because, right. you know, you're going to be black right. and I'm going to be white. Right. Okay. Well, you said it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, so far, I'm kind of waiting for somebody to go, hey, nigger. You know, but, but, gonna but, it's not going to happen. You know, it's well, not going to happen. It. I really don't think that Bruno is getting the black experience yet. And I'm not sure if he's going to ever open his mind to it. Uh, you're saying you think you know that I started to experience something. I'm telling you, no. <laughs> no. I'm going to a poetry thing, and I don't have anything memorized yet, and I would have liked to. That's not so good if I needed to write a poem and, and memorize it. I really love words. I do. And like, to me, you can never have enough adjectives. I want everybody to introduce themselves and tell me your favorite entertainer. My name is Latoya Higgs. My favorite artist is Mary J. Blige. My name is Cherie Busby, and my favorite entertainer is Prince. Okay, blessed. I'm an avid Michael Jackson fan. My name is Jonathan. My favorite performer is Dave Chappelle. Uh, my name is Rose, and my favorite entertainer, I kind of love the Cranberries. So, the Cranberries. The cranberries. That Coffee. verse. Don't yeah, exactly, definitely. You only have one opportunity to make a first impression. So my first impression was like, I love the cranberries. What was that? Whenever we do our poems, we have to stand up. Okay? I don't know how to face this. I'm standing in the mirror faceless. My mom is at my shoulder telling me to escape this. There's so many far before me with war life stories of prison and death. I'll take a deep ass breath. What, what, what is this that torments my existence? That removes the joy in every single instance? Am I doing Whoa. the concert? Who got the idea that I was ready for this? I felt like a lamb in a lion's den. I'm always down for my black people, though sometimes they be acting so evil. Unbelievable how my patience remains. Though at times I feel an alien blood runs through these veins, and this thought sustains. The alien is me. These people rock, and they're speaking about being black from their heart of hearts. And I'm hoping to God that this sounds black. Okay. Thank you. Many words, my life, the so simple complexities of a human psyche. To even relish in my thoughts of romantic stride. My skin to his. <sighs> my touch returned. A mutual undulation of want and reciprocal acceptability and performance. A ritual so profound. The taste of sex. The body flush with hot and sticky fantastic. A basket of unbroken fruit. A dripping bouquet of red ripe woman. The pulp of the soul spread lavishly over the human chemistry when discovery and pleasure were encouraged. Thank you. Were you nervous? Shitless. Yeah, I felt, I felt no. that you were nervous. So yeah. this uh, you have a lot of big words. I have a lot of big words. I don't get, you know, right. and you have to know your audience and know that if you're speaking to an audience of people, that not everybody's gonna understand what you're talking about. That was hard. This project is so much more unnerving and probing than you can possibly expect it to be. So how was today for you, Yeah, I was just about to ask you. It was incredible. Some of the most beautiful, intense poetry I've heard in a long time. Everything was just from the heart. 
racism, prejudice, black lifestyle came up a lot because they were talking about being black. So did you get up and say anything? I did. But here I am in front of everybody and I'm like, I hope it at least is black enough to get through this class. Like, You know what, if I'd have got in there for the first time, done. I would have done, done. done. I would have like shaking my socks. Yeah, that's, that's courage. Rose has a good head on her shoulder and I think Bruno can take a page from, from Rose's book and, and learn. That is one place I do not want to get found out. Like, oh, really? Oh, yeah, no, the only way I feel okay being in there is if I work my ass off. They're doing something you feel incredible like they would really, like... I don't feel like that would be respectful of me. I don't know how I'm feeling right now because I want to strike up friendships, and if something went wrong, like, if they found out that I was white, somebody's not going to feel cool about it. I don't want to go in there again and do what I did. Just don't. My dad is always talking about how whites are treated differently than black people. But in my generation now, we really don't see all that. We just see people. As long as you cool with us, then we cool with you. Oh my goodness, check it out. Oh my God. Wow, amazing. I'm going to be white today, so I want to go and do something only white kids do. Today, I'm going to edit class with Nick to see how well he blends in with white kids. What's nice name? to meet you, Claudia. Claudia Rose, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Rose. Hi, I'm Claudia. Nice Nick. to meet you. Nick. Etiquette actually it's not just rules, it's the way you behave, the way you're going to be accepted. Basically it teaches you know how to eat at fancy restaurants and how to greet people and be polite. I want to see you pretend to eat your soup. Pretend, pretend you're, you're really eating. Pretend I you're really eating. Is. Okay, you eat from the inside to the outside. Yeah. Jeez, Remember, soup. when your mom used to feed you, it was like this? Yes. Okay, you guys are grown-ups now. I actually don't think Nick is enjoying himself at all. I know that you were still acting like yourself, and you do have a real vernacular that's quite, like, I mean, at least stereotypically black. Um, I'm always gonna be myself. Yeah, you're not gonna be working with how you act, as in like enunciating and stuff like that. You can't act white. You, you can't. Okay, so that's your opinion. I mean, you can't. I just don't, you know, really see no point into this racism thing. You know, I'm not the racist person, so all that stuff doesn't really matter to me. So what's kind of your, like, goal for this, then? Just to pass. Just to pass? <laughs> I'm here for the fun. Mm -hmm. Today will be the first day that I work at Leo's Bar. It's a little all-white bar. There's a bartender. Taking my notes game. I think I can fix it this time though. Hold on. Bring ass video like y'all niggas like this is how y'all know y'all bro. Wait till I wait till I come up with my perspectives. Then and like, what are y'all niggas talking about? Like, like y'all niggas talking about a boring ass video. Like, yo, bro, yo, bro, whoever said boring ass video, put your social media in the chat right now. Are you getting banned? It's cool. I'm being the fly on the wall. Get to see. Pin, pin the social if you don't pin it, ban them in 30 seconds. A day. And why? Oh, you want to establish a rapport with all these guys. If you take care of them, they're going to take care of you. I have to speak proper grammar, or as we black community say, I have to speak white. Yes, see? Okay, I'm going to watch you. You, you, you must be a, re a real regular right here. Then I got into some conversation with a guy. There you go. It was so easy because they thought I was so white up in there. I just asked him a simple question. What is the neighborhood like? Yeah, well, this is pretty much a white area. You so don't have any problems. Oh, okay. Right in. I grew up in this neighborhood, and this is one of the last somewhat 
unaffected bastions of middle class Caucasian America uh, inside Los Angeles. Nice part of the, uh -huh. Most okay. of the cities around this area have changed significantly. This is the one that's almost like a it's been insulated for some reason. Wow. I kinda got that feel when yeah. I came through this neighborhood. And the neighbors wanted to stay that way. Exactly. They don't want a lot of change, they don't want a lot of building, they don't want a lot of immigration okay. because they've seen what's happened in the peripheral communities. Oh, okay. And it's taken the quality of life down. He just like went on and on. This is the last little white community. We want to keep it like this. In other words, this will be the place for you to move and bring your white family if you want to have your kids raised in a, in a, in a good name. Uh, this area up here is somehow remained untouched. Okay. So That's interesting. So okay. if you're looking for a safe place to raise your kids, you can't do better than this, I think. I think if I was in there in black, of course I wouldn't get that kind of information. But because he thought I was white, he had that comfort zone, he spilled his guts. I was really blown away for him to say all that to me. It was tough. I, I know there is some people like that, but you want to think of this as, as a much better place. What happened for us today, Bruno, is I want to walk down the street, uh, you and I as black guys, and I want a white woman to clutch the purse real quick or not look at you when you try to say hello. And I want to be in the store and I want security to, you know, snoop around. Bruno tries to make light of my experiences of racism. It's very important to me that he sees what blacks deal with on a daily basis. My buddy from what well, I play ball with, um, Scott, and he's uh, six seven. A big guy and black and he says I've never experienced racism black um, what black to deal with on a daily basis my buddy from what well, I play ball with um, Scott and he's uh, six seven a big guy and black and he says I've never experienced racism I don't want to you know go away like that guy just looking for racism. He just always, he just walks into a place. He to, to be, to be honest, looking. I think it's a mixture. Yeah. I, th I think when somebody reacts to you in a certain way, you do kind of look for it, and you never know why they're reacting to you in that way. Maybe they do hate black people. Uh, or maybe they just, you know, their husband slapped them that morning. When you're black, and you're black all your life, you know when it's a, a, a bitter person, a bad day, right. or Prejudice. or when you're just black. You know, as long as you sit there and negate everything I say, well, you're not going to listen for it. You, you can debate, debate, but I just debate, I tell you what, debate I'll be looking look for, for it. it. I have no problem with that. As a matter of fact, you and I will be shopping, you and you go. can go check there out the go. person over just, there. Just be receptive, and check it out. all I ask. Absolutely. Okay. And you can okay. even point it out to me. Okay. You know. All right. All right. <laughs> When I walked into poetry class, I couldn't have been more nervous. The whole class was scary to me because it was something so foreign. So I decided that I'm going to just walk in there like, why not? I'm me, that's that, period. Conquer some fear. Why not? OK, ready? Go. Concentration. Concentration is the game. Keep the rhythm, or you'll be at the game. Topic is colors. Purple. Brown. Black. Pink. Yellow. Silver. Off-white. Reddish green. Shit! I'm not about to go into a place and pretend that I know what I'm doing. But if for some reason I start changing and growing and learning in a different way that I didn't expect, I'll let it happen. When I started to realize that it did feel real, and it made me feel like now I've got some friends on board, and that I needed. The objective today is to find out whether we can roam freely and without um, excessive paranoia our way. I'm going to be polite and respectful, as I am to everybody, and I expect that they will be the same to me. I, I can't imagine somebody actually being rude to me or saying rude things. Or, uh, I don't anticipate that at all. I hope you do get the experience of, of seeing that they're watching you a little bit different. You get a little slower service. They don't give a shit whether you buy uh, this or that. Or you do get some looks. You can be the most pleasant person in the world, and it still could happen. Every time that Bruno debates that racism exists, it really pisses me off. You'll see how I approach life as I walk into this store, and we'll see if somebody blows me off and how I handle it. 
That's bullshit. All You're right. sitting there and you want to sit on the little lily white pedestal and say shit is not happening in the world. And that's bullshit. I hear and you. you. No, you I, sit, I know it's out there, but I'm right trying to enlighten you on no, the fact no. that you have to approach life in a certain that's way and bullshit. not, not I expect. When I tell example. you about my life, you say it's a bad day when I tell you that uh, someone um, doesn't acknowledge my existence or if I speak they don't speak everybody have a shitty day on that particular day that nobody wants to speak or I don't get good service or it takes them too long to, to, to deal with me because I'm black I've been black for damn 41 years almost I know when I'm being bullshitted because I'm black or when somebody having a bad day and that's the thing that you won't grasp or you won't understand because you want to debate every goddamn thing that we sit up in here and say and we're just trying to help you get the experience, but you won't get it. We'll see what happens. I'm all eyes and all ears. Things happen when you play. See that? Did you see that? What happened? She looked and ran over. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Well, she looked and ran over. It's just a little, 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 little thing. You know. Yeah. But you know why they do it. And once you start knowing, you know. Well, she had, but you know. I, the, I, I know she was gonna run over. She, she had to, because they were taking the whole over. sidewalk. I was, way, I was like right here with you. Yeah. And they had to give it up. I, mean, I, I mean, know she had know. to move over, but I mean, yeah. it's the way she did, uh -huh. so she wouldn't have to look at me. I experience that all the time, Brian. It's just not a super unique thing. And I looked at her, and she looked right at me. You notice that? Did she look at you too? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was looking. I was. Boom, we had like yeah. three seconds of eye okay. contact. Okay. I truly believe that if you walk into an establishment and carry yourself in a distinguished way mm -hmm. and greet people with respect and courtesy, mm -hmm. they will respond in the kind. Really nice for me. Guess what? That's exactly what happened. Good. How are you? All right. I like to see you've got on. Oh, thank you. Very nice. Bruno thinks that salespeople are coming over to help him, but they're really coming over to size him up. Yeah. So he kind of came up to us and acknowledged us. Racism is out there in the film. You know what I think? I think from your reaction today, you're looking for it. I'm not looking for it. You know a snubbing. snubbing I, I get snubbed now, too. But you and I, this evening, saw the same things. Mm -hmm. I saw one thing, you saw another. When a family is covering the entire sidewalk and they move over so that we can get by, you see that as them getting out of the way because you're black. You're looking for something that I think isn't there. You're thinking that everything is okay, and it's not. I would like for Bruno to just understand that it is a little bit more difficult being black in an all-white society than being white in an all-white society. If you come into a place and you've got this resentment and this expectation of prejudice, it's gonna find you. If you go in with an open heart and love, and, and you know, you <laughs> can laugh. Cool. But cool. my life is, I get joy because I put joy out. Mm -hmm. I don't get, you know, suspicion because I'm not looking for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming at it with a chip on my shoulder. And, uh, and, and that's what I get back from the world. He just carries this knowing that that people just don't like him. You see what you want to see. And you don't see what you don't want to see. Chris and chicken. That's the job. <laughs> Focus and race on the hall. That's it. Pam. Me. I felt nervous. Like, are they going to accept that I'm black? It was scary. It was great. I knew that Brian was behind the two-way mirror, and he had given me some half great. Take a few minutes. I was mindful. What do you see today as the biggest difference between being black and white in America? I mean, when I think of white people, I think uh, ethnocentric. Very much like my way of saying things is the best, most correct way. And anything that's different than that, you know, I don't want to get to know. It's assimilation. You know, it's kind of like as long as we assimilate and do what they do, we're okay. But if we're kind of like off on the side doing our own little thing, you might be a little bit intimidating. It seems like that's just the way it is. This world is dominated by 
white people and I don't think it's any way that we'll ever be considered equal. Because they just talk at you anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm a grown man, you be having them talk. Hey, get over there, hey, get this, pick that up. Hey, get over here, you know? It's like, wait, I'm a man. They don't even talk to their kids like that. There's a world there that I got to have an eye opening view of. It was pretty amazing um, and very enlightening to experience just a taste of what it's like for the black world. You know, there's a lot of controversy about the N-word and who can use it or whether it should be used at all. Who has experienced an intentional attempt to disrespect you by using that term? That's what I'm trying to get at. Oh, yeah. Have you had experiences like that? Yeah, I used to work as a doorman at a disco, you know, and if somebody came up intoxicated or didn't have the right dress on, you know, they'd say, come on, nigga, you know, or you know, a lot more hostile than that. And I just, you know, mm -hmm, yeah, that's right, I'm a nigga. And, you know, it just wouldn't affect me. And that would be the end of the conflict, just like that. Because I wouldn't give it the power. Mm. The only reason why people call you derogatory names is so that they can inflame you. If you don't empower the people that call you the N-word by getting upset, you win. And the idiot that just called you that doesn't have any power. My main thing is nowhere I run. <laughs> things with my hands. My name is Brian. I enjoy uh, building computers, uh, things like that. I like fixing things with my hands. My name is Renee. And my hobbies, whoa. <laughs> Swimming, tennis, shopping. How prevalent is racism still in today's society? Uh, you know, I want to think that everybody is treated equally, and you know what? They're not. Um, I had an experience where I was managing a girl who was black, and she had the worst attitude I have ever seen. I wanted to fight her so bad. It had nothing to do with the color of her complexion. Whatever I would have to document to fire her, I'd have to have an even longer list to make sure that we're not sued. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday, there's a black guy behind the counter, and uh, my friend tipped him and said, put a tip in the jar and said, thank you, brother. And the guy said, watch how you say that. Only black people can call themselves brother or even the N-word. I don't look at a black person and say, I want to do harm. But sometimes there's these innate things that I think have been taught that, you know, I shake someone's hand that's black and my instinct is to wipe it or something. I am very conscious of it afterwards and I feel horrible about it. And it takes work to switch that around. When he said that, I was like, wow. Um, the guy's just shaking when he was telling us. Okay, so for the people, I wasn't really looking at the comments, I'm not going to lie, like, I was very, in, this is the stuff that, like, we'd have to watch in certain classes, because I had some, I forgot what the class was in my sophomore year, where we decided to watch bear videos like this, and give our opinions, and give how, give opinions on how we feel like we could healthily help, like, change our community in a healthy manner, or change how we approach certain situations in a healthy manner, so I was taking some notes, where do I want to start, because my notes is all over the place, since, like, my mind was just racing. One, like, y'all niggas, like, bro, this is so sad. I don't, I don't even want to speak from my sad, from my sad stance, but it's like, bro, do y'all not realize how something is literally wrong with you if you feel like you always need to be entertained, even if this information is great information for you? Like, you feel like you always need to be entertained. And it's so sad because, like, at least when I was 11, 12, if I'd seen something like this and I was five minutes in, I was going to continue watching it. But it's like, if y'all seeing something and three, four minutes in is not entertaining, y'all don't want to watch it, bro. And that's not even allow your, allowing yourself to see another... I don't want to get into the whole perspective thing. But I'll stay on this topic, right? So y'all niggas that didn't want to watch this, like, that says a lot about you, especially if you're black. And the majority of us in here are black. So if you didn't want to watch this... Niggas like you wouldn't even be my friend. Um, so, let me look at my notes now. Okay, so I'll start off with the car dealership. I feel like the car dealership was, a wrong, was the wrong environment. Like, at the end of the day, you're in a corporate area where people are forced to be cordial to you and approach you in such manner. So, I feel like if you really wanted to see something, like, or really get um, a worse experience, the car dealership was the, was the worst place to go to have. But niggas had enough time and thought to think about um specific places um let 
Let me just read some of my notes. Okay, I also, like, I feel like I want to speak hand in hand. I feel like I only don't want to speak to one side. I feel like the problems that we seen, the problems that I seen with my community watching this video is basically like, we do not want to educate ourselves to any extent. And we don't see the perks that we will have in the society if you were to learn how to articulate yourself properly. So, okay, for instance, like the teenage boy, and it's perfect that they had a boy that age. Like, nigga come and nigga talking about some old... I don't want to learn, like, I just want to pass city, I did it, I die. like, nigga can't hold, hold no cordial conversation. When you really look into the depth of it, one, most teachers in our community are underpaid, you can say that generally, but from hands-on experience and communication with these teachers, it's like, you're underpaid, then it's, bro, it's so much avenues I can go into, but it's like, I feel like the requirement for children growing up to be able to articulate themselves in a very efficient manner isn't as hefty and i feel like when you get to certain ages like 11 12 that or like even like maybe even like 9 10 that's when niggas start hitting you with if you can articulate your, yourself properly oh why are you acting white why are you being white and it comes off corny and it's like it's cool when you say it now it's cool when you make them jokes and it's not anything when you make them jokes but it's like what happens when it's time for you to have a job interview see what i'm saying we don't live in a perfect um you don't live in a perfect world, bro. Like, everything not going to change up quick. But there's definitely ways where I feel like you could speed up the process of what you want when certain um demographics of people are blocking you in a sense, right? So then I'm trying to look at this white nigga's mindset because that's the thing. Like, when people speak and I'm honestly having a debate or I'm looking at my how I view things, I really want to... I'm really trying to hear what the other person is saying. And it's like... I do understand this white nigga being like, I'm not really feeling anything. Like, maybe the niggas wasn't as talking to him as much as as they I, as they would have if this nigga, if they knew that he was white. But it's like, I have to understand that you're thinking in that manner because you don't experience it every day. This is not something you experience every day for the rest of your life. If you experienced a sub a sub what is the word subtle tone a subtle tone subtle tone of of disrespect every day for two three four years if you had to act like if you had to play out this um black person for two three four years it will bother you bro then you would see the difference because you i feel like you kind of feel left out in a sense but even though that's interesting it's like i have so much notes bro i have so much just i don't even know where to start bro um nigga said something like maybe they do hate black people or their husband slapped them that morning and it's like bro that's that's a crazy ass comment like Yo, that's a crazy ass comment. I just want to pin out some stuff. I don't want to go in a whole bush. Um, you don't even want to. You don't want to skin. Yeah, it's nothing within ourselves. Even when that girl was talking about, like, at first when she came, bro, look at the time span of how that white girl was talking. So when she came in, she had that poem. Her first response was, "Oh, they're so cool. Like these people are." Like, they're so cool. Like, their exper ex their experiences are so cool. And then, when she comes to the table, she's more, like, addressing the problems and the struggles and the trauma. But that girl's a bit smarter than everyone else. But she she confidently said how she interpreted, interpreted it in the beginning. And as, as she got in the crib, because time passed. Remember, we're not seeing when time is passing and you can really sit on your thoughts to see what you want to see. She want to come, like, bro, what you clearly thought is that you don't even look into the depth of how we express ourselves express ourselves you're just like oh it's cool but she knew what she was seeing where else do i want to go again um as far as the nigga like oh i have a black friend who i play ball with and he's six seven and he never he said he never experienced racism first of all that's cap this nigga is fully six seven. Second of all when when he's spewing his opinions it's like bro you're just looking at one you're just looking at things from my, one mindset and it does come it does come off like he's ignorant because it's like you're not trying to hear anything this nigga is saying. What else do I have to see? Um, I feel like sometimes we have to also be able to distinguish like when people are trying to be genuine or just nice. And sometimes we shouldn't be so standoffish. But it's also like, I feel like it's just like these same replayed experiences. 
So like, okay, say every day when you're around right people, they disrespect you. And then the one day, this right nigga come and he tipped you. And he's like, oh, um, um, whatever, brother, whatever, brother. Like, you're gonna, you, you, you're probably gonna be on edge. I feel like we need to be able to read a room sometimes, even with that. I feel like the main problem that we have, though, is just wanting to um, educate ourselves. We don't want to educate ourselves, bro. And even with the nigga talking about how, oh, community and, and, oh, we have this, we have this closed off community and nothing's happening and we're sure that the kids are safe. That's a whole nother conversation again. Because it's like, isn't that crazy that that was said in that time, but now being in Flatbush, I see mad white people in the middle, in the dead middle of Flatbush living in our communities and side eyeing us. So it's like you're coming over here and then you want to move like that like 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 that as well. I'm 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 racing through my thoughts, bro. It's cause I can't even write an essay. If I could have wrote an essay, I would have been eating, bro. But it's like it's just so much perspectives, bro. Like But this is how I view my life. One, like I feel like I in general, I don't wanna be the one like oh 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 but I definitely had way more racist experiences than probably all of my friends. That they don't even know about that I don't even speak about. And the way I just viewed my life is just like Growing up, I felt very excluded. Not that much because I was always within my own culture. But it's like, as I went through college and I seen how these people treated me, it's just like, what can I say? What can I say? Like, this is my experience. I wasn't dealing with it every day, but when I dealt with it, it was the most severe like it was just uh, bro it's just too embarrassing to even get into I feel like I, I can't even see some situations like some niggas did 10 times the shit that this nigga, that this nigga is talking about like shit that just straight embarrassed me when I was a child and I couldn't even fight a white person bro a white adult when they were saying things I just feel like the way I look at my life is okay say I wanted to that's what my mom put me through college like she wanted me to be able to just carry myself well and even though I'm in a different demographic or different area of people like I will know how to carry myself even if I don't want to live amongst these people I feel like we're turning into a corporate world bro and at the end of the day we're a minority like at the end of the day I'd be like I don't like these people and I'm not speaking I'm speaking generally but I'm not speaking for everybody and it's just like I just carry out my life different bro I'm a, I don't, I'm not a Debbie Downer I'm not a Debbie Downer but I cannot go and look at another black person and be like, you're a Debbie Downer. Because they might have way more, they might have way worse experiences or way more frequent experiences than I've had. So I look at that as well. At the end of the day, I'm still in my community. Um, I don't know, gang. I don't know, gang. I don't know, gang. And it's like, when you really look at that too, like, they, they don't see it because, like, not all of them control, not all of them controlling everything. So it's like, when we're like, okay, we can't get access to jobs. Bro, I have so many family members that had their masters, had their MBA, and had higher positions than some of their white co-workers. And when it was time for them to apply for a position, they couldn't get that position for years. And they're getting interviewed all the time, and they can never hear back why they didn't get the, why they didn't get the job, and they knew that they exceeded the requirements. So that's another thing to look at, too. And these are people in my life who are, who are way more educated than, than the regular person. Um, I just feel like the white nigga couldn't see it because to you it was just like to you it was just like you're not experiencing that every day bro if you were to experience that every day you wouldn't feel well bro you just feel excluded bro but it's nothing to him bro and at the end of the day if I'm being up and vibrant to every to every white person that I see I'm just so up and vibrant but it's like I still feel that subtle tone of disrespect, why am I going to be up and vibrant? I'm just going to leave you alone in your space, gang. We don't even be talking like we hate white people. I still make them jokes. But that's not how we, that's not even how we speak about those people. And I don't know, gang, like, the obsession with the word is still weird to me, bro. Like, the only reason I don't react to it is just because I don't want people feeling like they have that much power to just get me to give into that. But, like, the obsession with the word is very interesting, bro. I don't know, bro, like, 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 nigga, you're not one of us, bro. You just want to feel like you're one of us. Like, know your place, game. Know your place, game.
What else do I have to see? And then even looking at this and like looking at our experiences, no matter how sad we are, like I have never met one person in my life that wished that they weren't black. Like I enjoy being black. I love my culture. I love our cultures. Um, but it is also interesting to notice that like we did, we do have moments where we have preferred to be light skinned, whether that's like when you were getting bullied or when you weren't feeling accepted by our own people. I think that was more of like a colorism thing in our community. But as far as being white, like I don't, I don't, I never met somebody who wanted to be white, bro. Like, and I feel like these people know we don't want to be white. Like niggas do not want to be white. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like they low key be looking at us in some way. Like niggas wish they was y'all. Niggas do not wish they was you, bro. I swear to God, not one black person wish they was white, bro. That I've met in my life ever, ever. Um, I don't know, gang. Perspective is everything, bro. Everybody has different experiences, you know. Like, I feel like I'm desensitized to some of the comments that I be hearing. But it's like, what irks me is just like, when you really hear about things like Black Wall Street, you know? Like, it's like when we build our own communities, the niggas really came in our communities and burned that shit down, bro. And that's the history that people want to take out of these Florida schools. And we're not even supposed to know that history. I feel like even when you look at education, like, most of our textbooks are outdated compared to the um these white populated schools so like shit is done purposely on the back end as well bro like they do want to dumb us down on purpose bro especially in public school systems so that's another thing you could be like oh you disagree or you're just complaining i feel like some people might watch this and feel like oh what if he's just complaining when it's like at the end of the day this 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 family was still a successful black black family and that's way harder to um that's something that's way harder to achieve when you are black and it's just niggas just saying like you could just fix up your tone fix up your body language bro niggas don't want to be our best friends but y'all just be blatantly doing shit bro i don't know man. and it's just like that's why i really can't kiss white people ass you know that's why i really don't talk to to talk to them people bro like of course i made a cool white person here or there I probably like I always say Camille but I probably only know like three four cool white people but it's like bro like I look in a white person face and just see that something off with them see 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 I just see I just see I just see the hate I see the hatred I see the hatred in your eyes it's like it's it's like me being around you is so unbearable for you and it's like gang niggas don't want to be around you like, I, I don't even understand it, bro. I don't know, gang. I don't know, gang. But the way I look at my life, like... Even with my kids, per se. Even with my kids, like... I'm a, I'm a, my, my kids are going to be well-educated, bro. And they're going to be able to articulate themselves at any time. And I feel like that even just... I feel like sometimes we need to hold each other accountable. Like when you see somebody just acting mad ghetto, it's like these people are having. Okay, so imagine being a white family and you never seen a black person, and the first time you ever see a black person, they're disrespectful. Like, and when, and and say that black person is my acquaintance, and I could go to my acquaintance and I'm, I could, I could be like, bro. Don't act like this around these type of people, bro. Or like, just, 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 just cool up yourself, calm down yourself. Like, you don't want to feed into that stereotype, cause that's what, that's what, that's what they're gonna bring back home, and teach their kids. Niggas gonna be like, bro, I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm gonna act like how I wanna act. But there's really a time and place for everything, bro. There's a time and place for everything, bro. There's a time and place for everything. Like, even I be laughing at certain situations, like Mandy said, bro, Mandy said, like, if you watching that, bro. Last time we went to Applebee's, went to Applebee's was when when with some girl that I like. When we went, we in the Applebee's with white, with just bare white people. Me, and Lisa, my other mans, we know how to carry ourselves. We all went to school together, bro. Plus we went to a private school, so it's just like, 
niggas niggas understood decorum. A lot of a lot of black people don't care about decorum from what I see in my neighborhood, bro. Or just like etiquette. So as soon as this girl get in the Applebee's, like I joked about this before, this bitch pull out her phone and take his snaps in the Applebee's like she never went nowhere in her life. Am I not supposed to hold you accountable and be like, yo, you're you're making us look bad, like we don't eat, like we don't eat. Like we don't like we don't step up like every white person was side eyeing us, bro. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, do you not see where we at? It's not even like you was in a you was in a fancy restaurant. Like we in this low budget restaurant, and you doing that, and you can't even do that in a fancy restaurant because niggas gonna still look at you like you don't go nowhere. So then, little shit like she trying to change her order. She's snapping at the waiter. She's snapping at the waiter. Mind you, the waiter black. The only it's only us and the waiters that's black. So I'm looking at her and I'm like, that's mad ghetto. I'm like, you're mad ghetto. She like, I'm not affecting nobody. I'm not hurting nobody. They doing their job at the end of the day. Like, am I am I am I bothering anyone? And it's like I just had to look like yo. Everybody views situations differently. But when are you just going to open your mind to look at life a little different, bro? I don't know, gang. And when she said that, bro, I ain't even say nothing to her, bro. Because I don't like to... Like, real life, real life, when it comes to situations like that, I have to see what you're saying. Like, you live in your own world right now. Like, you feel like you're not hurting anybody. You're not You're not, You're not. not messing with anybody's emotions. Other than that. The whole time, you don't even see this whole nigga. Bro, even when people just be snapping at people, like, who the fuck are you? Like, bro, that could get me heated so quick. Niggas even putting their finger in somebody's face, like... Who the fuck are you, bro? I don't know, game. I don't know, game. But I be, I be, I be, I be stuttering around my words because it's just like I don't even care to be around white people. That's how I truly view my, view my life, bro. I do not care to be around my people. Like I care to be around my people, and I, 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 I care to be wealthy in a black neighborhood where people. Where people can act with sense and raise their kid with sense. And that's a beautiful life to me. I would never want to live amongst mad white people like. No. No. Um You just can't go back and forth to people, they're not worth it. But it's alright. I feel like I'm so touchy and I feel like because it's really college, bro, like them people, bro, like. I have so much experiences I can't even speak about, bro. What the fuck, bro? But how are we gonna acquire the wealth when we haven't built institutions that can provide that kind of wealth? Nigga, you acting like I said this for, for the next generation. Like, I'm speaking about wealth in my own terms for me and my personal family. Anybody can't... Well, I won't say that. Well, I'm speaking about my life in that aspect, like, but there are black communities where people act with a bit more sense, and I'll start off there, raising my children there, and I would just never want my children to, to just live, live like, this is their reality every day, maybe they're going to have experiences aside from that, maybe just going to work or other, but as for, in terms of neighborhood and school, I would never want my kids to just live feeling like, feeling like always excluded and always left out and like, 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 like they just some little black thing in the corner like, no bro, my kids going to most likely a black private school, bro. They won't even feel that shit as much, bro, and they're just going to know how to carry themselves. When you're around these white people, you know, carry yourself this way. You don't want to get shot. You don't want to die. I don't know you. Focus on yourself. Gotta expand on these communities, but it takes time. But I mean, in order to have mad motion, it means we have to navigate among among the white people. Well, everybody got different agendas, you know. Like the world will slowly shift, you know. I I feel like I already know. Even though I'm talking right now, like I don't see my personal goals, but I have personal goals to change the community. But everybody has to start in their own small way. Niggas can't just wake up and be like, oh, I got this big thing and like, 
I know how I'm going to help my community and how I'm going to help black people in my own way. And I'm already stirring on that. I already have all my ideas. So it's like, I just know how I want my personal life to be. But I know what I'm going to add to the community. But I'm not going to feel like I'm it, it, like I'm stressing myself to have a movement. Like, no, I, I will do what I know I'm supposed to do. But I'm not going to turn into some like, I don't even want to say that. The fact that there's a white and black school in America is crazy to me. We just can't stick together for shit. I feel like we need to hold each other accountable, bro. Roast niggas. Ro That's why roasting is good. You're dumb. You can't read. Learn how to read. Go watch YouTube videos how to read without stuttering. You're dumb. You're a grown ass man. You're not incapable. You just don't care. All the hood niggas in class. And then isn't it crazy? Like, what we really idolize? Like, it's not even idolize, but what we're attracted to. Like, these bitches be so attracted to a hood nigga when we was in school. Whole time when it's time to read a book in class, these niggas is fidgeting. Why niggas picking on me? Why niggas picking on me? Like, what's up with y'all niggas? Like, why y'all niggas laughing? Like, nigga, because you're slow. Mine said I'm attracted to big asses like Ice Spice. I ain't gonna lie, bro. And you, bro, hold the band, bro. I'm not even tight. That's so why you got a black everybody out of here, bro. Bro, I'm telling you, like, the way how I slowly grow this community, like, when we're really up, like, niggas are gonna hate me. Niggas are just gonna hate me, like, I don't suck dick, bro. I don't want nobody coming in my chat just feeling like other oh, da jokes 24-7, like, are you a human, bro? You have sense, bro? And I ain't gonna lie, y'all little niggas, bro, I don't like some of y'all little niggas, bro. Y'all niggas, y'all little niggas just be flowing through life, like, 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 y'all are so distracted, bro. It was crazy, because he was talking about communities, and the communities being unsafe, but there's this nigga named, I think his name is Jamal Rashad, and he's this spiritual person, and he was basically talking about how, like, it's been proven that, like, the government sends, sends agents into um, black communities, and these are, like, ex, like, marine workers and like ex whoever is like what what whoever was in some professional whatever like that they send them to black communities and they would they because they already hip up about you know our gangs are um like where we reside so they would just go to certain um neighborhoods and just shoot shit up and just start gang wars and he was speaking on that too it's a whole bunch of shit bro i be i be I be so overwhelmed with information. That's why I feel like I just be going against my words. Because I just be seeing so much shit. Sometimes you don't even know what's true. But it lets you open your eyes. And I feel like when I see younger kids that don't want information. But you don't see the luxury. of You don't, you don't see how easy it is to access the information in your time. Like these niggas don't research nothing. That's why I be saying you're too addicted to your phones in a bad way. That's why I said on one of the streams like. As soon as your phone get took, as soon as you can't find your phone, as soon as you're in nature, you think of the craziest shit to search up on Safari. And as soon as you get on your phone, you don't search none of that shit up. The only time I see something about even aliens or conspiracy theories is if you see a 40 second clip on TikTok. Then you run with it. And nobody wants to research anything. And it's like, when y'all little kids move like that, like, the only thing I have to tell y'all is, bro, you're not going to be a kid for life. You're going to be an adult, and you're going to be a close-minded, dumb nigga who vapes. You're not going to be, niggas is not going to be joking with you no more. Like, bro, y'all niggas don't even see, like, bro, oh my God, like, y'all niggas don't care. I really appreciated my school, though, like. You wouldn't even embarrass my principal. Like, when we went to Denmark and we was with all them white people, none of us acted out. As, bro, I'm talking about when we was in the church and, and they wasn't around us and we slept in the church, we was having pillow fights. We was throwing juice on niggas. I was throwing niggas Yeezys, decking in at niggas necks. When we went outside, we was acting completely fine because we're not going to be... We're not gonna be the first black people you meet. You meet, then we're, we're we're giving off some bad rep. Like, no, we know how to hold ourselves, bro. My principal came. He was in the middle of Denmark, in one of the most um popular cities, 
and we was there. We came at 2 p.m. He said, everybody here, be back by 5.30 or 6 p.m. Nigga wasn't ringing down nobody's phone. Nobody stole nothing. Nobody was being mean for no reason. And we spun back. When we was in the room slapping each other up, he was behind the glass just smiling, joking, because we know how to chill. And they, they got you on them vapes real bad, dumbing you down. And they get and niggas need to stop smoking them weed, them weed pen, weed, 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 weed pens as well, bro. But hey, that nigga's not gonna stop. Because you don't work on your character or reflect on yourself and see the, 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 the teenager and the adult you're becoming, all your flaws are gonna just be like constant, and that's gonna be you. And when you're twenty twenty one and you realize that you can't socialize, you realize that you don't have any friends who who, who hold any form of intelligence in their mind and you just waking up every day doing the same thing oh niggas playing 2k oh niggas gonna smoke oh i'm gonna blow up as an artist yeah niggas are done bro niggas like that and it's like okay i even say we're supposed to hold each other accountable but when i see a dumbass nigga who don't even want to want to look at another side of things it's like why am i wasting my breath with you because all we gonna do is get in an argument i am got to do nothing bro like niggas living their own life niggas getting money it's so interesting, bro. Niggas just getting money. That's a, that's all some niggas care about too. Niggas life be so bad. That's all they can care about. Even if it's getting money illegally. But why is it that white people, ha black people, have to prove themselves to white people to act accordingly? If anything, it should be them proving themselves to us. Like, cause it's, bro. When I see white, like, bro. I don't, I just don't like the disrespect, but I don't feel like, it's, it's very confusing, because even your emotions can be mixed up on a day, like, some days, bro, I some, it's like I be chatting sometimes, some days I'll be in school, I'll be dressing how I want to dress, I'll be talking how I want to talk, I don't care who come around, because it's like, bro, niggas not trying to please you, or, 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 or try to come to you, and, 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 and prove that I'm not as idiotic as you think I am. And the amount of experiences I would have in school, just especially from like writing a paper or hosting a presentation, and I would never, ever, ever, ever speak in class. And as soon as I hold that presentation, niggas' eyes is glaring up. Oh, you write so well. Oh, I didn't know that you could. Oh, I like this. I didn't know that you. Oh, I like this. Oh, you're out. Oh, I like this. And it's like, the fact that you're saying that is just like, bro, like, I wasn't even doing it to appeal to you. This is just how I carry out my work. And then they be so shocked. And then they want to speak to you after and have a whole conversation. But it's like, bro, niggas is not your mans. Bro, that's why I'm really happy, bro. Like, you know, sometimes I be getting advice from other people. Like, you know, sometimes you should think about expanding your community and more white people. And da -da -da -da. Like, every streamer I ever seen, all the white people be in the comments like, hard R, bear hard R's, bear hard R's, bear just monkey, 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 why would I want that if I'm streaming live, why would I want that, my jokes don't even appeal to white people, and I'll never appeal my joke, I'll never um change my sense of humor to appeal to white people, that's what every major celebrity or comedian does when they want more money, you have to be more generic so they can laugh, because they don't, they don't understand our, our subcultures, so it's like, no, like, no, like, some of my friends be coming to me like, white, these, some of my white friends, like, bro, why are you talking to me about your white friends? I don't make content for white people, bro. And it's so bad to say, but it's like, do I personally care? I don't. And then people try to also box me. People will say, well, OG, how do you expect to get somewhere in life and be in big industries? Who said I wanted to be in a big industry? People love boxing you so much. It's like people be trying to plan out my life for me. I know exactly what I want to do in my life to achieve my goals within my own standards, within my own visions. That doesn't have to do with the stepping stone or validation of, of, of white people. Niggas acting like I'm a, I'm a nigga that want to be on Fox News. Like, no, like, I want to create wealth from business, bro. And then nigga think, niggas, niggas think a business is you... You, 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 me saying bendable on a t-shirt, like, no, like, I'm not that generic, bro. I'm 
I'm not that generic, bro. People really be, be viewing me like a generic soul. I feel like there's so much aspects of myself I don't reveal on social media. But it's like, I don't care to appeal to white people, bro. And I never will, bro. No, bro. These niggas be looking mad idiotic. That's all everybody has to do to blow up, bro. The only nigga that appealed to white people to an extent and was genuinely funny was Juski. And that's just because Juski grew up, grew up. Not even say grew up, but he really be around them white niggas to just, you know, and it be funny. As, outside of that, bro, every other black creator I know, them niggas moved mad weird once they started appealing to white people or just making fun of things within our own community in a corny way. Like, there's no way... I, I would I have never made no watermelon joke, no fried chicken joke, no 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 retro Jordans joke. Like 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 so when these niggas was doing that shit like King Batch and thing like bro you, these niggas know they corny bro. I be looking right through that shit bro. That's not real humor bro. That's not real humor bro. I was having this conversation yesterday with somebody. I was like, that's why people who don't laugh at my jokes. I feel like they're mentally deranged. But I pray for them. Cause it's like bro, like this is really me. Like I'm really me. Like I don't cap I don't come on social media act any other way. And I fully love my personality, bro. I've always been the the the, the class clown, bro. Got a fake laugh around these white people, bro. I have never I have never in my life fake laughed at no white person joke, bro. I look them dead in their face. That shit not funny. King. King. And they really don't, they just don't understand, like, the amount of negative experiences we have in life. Like, niggas are not that fun to just come dilly dally with you. Dilly dally with the wrong nigga, then we get shot. Especially when you're not in the city, bro. Looking back, you you just sit and sit. What the fuck are we taking in? Hey, bro. I know all I can do, bro, is try to leave my little positive influence and, and make sure that my children grow up with sense and grow up knowing how to carry themselves. And I feel like I did a good job as, as a person on this earth. You know what I was thinking? I don't know if people would ever be up to do this. And this is something like this. I'll give a small example of something I'd like to do in the future. This is not like my main goal. So this is why I'm just saying something. I seen some woman. Like there was this black lady. Like the first black lady to um, cure cancer and something. I seen it like. I, don't, I forgot what it was for. But she found a way to cure cancer for one specific thing. And it's like. Look how much people be going up missing bro. Especially black people. Whenever we have inventions like. Like, you'll go in the comments and there'll be niggas joking like, oh, yeah, protect this man at all costs. But we need to seriously be doing some shit like that, bro. Like, niggas, like, 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 it was there's some protection service or other, da, da, da. Like, there was some nigga that, um, found out how to, um, make oil, make oil from some, some, some other thing that wasn't really oil and power up an engine. Like, niggas is gonna get that nigga, bro. Nigga, that nigga need to be protected. Like, we need to have some type of system where these niggas, where black inventors are protected. And we know them niggas not even cloned. You talk to some niggas, some niggas be like, well, that's not something I'm going to heavily debate. I say I understand you disagreeing with me just because there isn't solid evidence. But, bro, you don't, like, bro, these niggas be cloned, bro. There's mad cloned people, bro. There's mad cloned people. Everybody done seen that video where niggas just done clone the animal specifically the lamb the goat all that everything everything down to the teeth so if they can clone an animal why can't they clone a human it's that simple bro niggas not gonna come out come out with that shit on cnn ain't nobody cloned nigga don't give a fuck about your comment nigga you wanna come debate me bro okay bro ain't nobody cloned Aliens aren't real. <laughs> I'm not debating with y'all niggas. I'm not debating with y'all niggas, bro. And you need to realize, y'all niggas that be so eager to just argue, it's like, don't you realize that 
the world is also beautiful because we all have different minds. So debates can be healthy and entertaining even if we agree to disagree. But as soon as somebody don't agree with you, you get so angry, you're dumb. You're literally dumb. How would life be if everybody had the same viewpoint on every single thing? Life wouldn't be that entertaining, bro. Everybody would be the same person, bro. What the fuck, bro? And niggas gotta realize y'all getting older, bro. All of my friends, I always argue with them. We're always arguing about something, bro. Because we have different minds. We just respect each other. That's it. But like, what the, the thing that I will say gets me slightly agitated is for you people who don't believe that, like, you don't believe that anything goes on outside of what you see. And that's very interesting, bro. I would always say this when I was younger. And this is just when I was younger. I would always say, like, do you know how easy it is for these niggas to just add, add, um, different planets in a textbook and we will never truly know if those planets are there and just because we've been presented that history from second third grade all the way up to now we think we have that that amount of planets or we think those specific planets are here and then what if those planets are here and there's aliens right on those planets and they lie and they say that there's none but because that's all we've been taught niggas just gonna go with it but when you go against that nigga you think you are nigga you think you are bro you just don't you don't even care to think out of what you're taught and it's like a nigga like you I wouldn't debate with. Because you think everything is crazy. Like, you really think we live a life where... You you really think we live a life where they just don't hide shit from us, bro? Specifically, bro. That's why when I get on the phone with bitches and bitches want to talk about, oh, well, you believe in aliens? Like, <laughs> you believe in aliens? Like, I don't know. Like, we can't be the only ones here, but that's all I, you know, I, I fake be believe in aliens, but I don't know. Like, da, da, da. and when they just start off with that, I'm like, okay, bro, you watching too much TikToks, bro. They caps be aliens and mermaids, bro. And it's like, that's not where I cap. That's not where I cap. Like, we don't even care that we don't have access to Antarctica. We don't care. And anybody who did the Antarctica, like, you know, them conspiracy theories, you've seen that anybody who's flown there, like, had their own private um, plane or, like, um, they got um, cleared to fly over there, they'd seen something completely different, and they all wrote down the same thing. And even with like the map the map that we have isn't the actual map and it's been proven mad times we don't even have the actual map and niggas will debate on new regions niggas will debate on new regions and it's proven that the map isn't the actual map and niggas will just type up on google and be like look at this which i didn't know that the map that we have isn't the actual map bro But that's so easy because how what researcher what research is the average average person gonna do or even actual physical like experimenting is the average person gonna do to go do that niggas don't care about that bro niggas need to make money bro if we never had to worry about money in life we would get so much shit done as a society and we would just automatically be kinder to people because we would just help everybody out and we would be more skilled so our resources and then our and then we wouldn't compare ourselves as much so our resources to be able to make like, um, you know, say a farm or, you know, actually like build a house and not compare our houses or our living spaces to others. We get a lot of shit done, bro.
if you had the chance to completely live your life in complete peace and ease with the sacrifice of completely leaving your old life behind, would you? What do you mean by my old life? I ain't gonna lie, bro. I feel like my life is pretty peaceful, bro. Like, I'm never gonna be a nigga. Like, I really have my personal situations that I never come on social media and speak about. But I just understand how social media works, so I'm not gonna crash out on social media. But, bro, yeah, that's what I be telling y'all, bro. Y'all have to wake up some days and just be like, you appreciate your life. All you have to do is compare sometimes and compare in the other in the other outlook, not just social media, bro. Look how much people back home I be seeing as Caribbean people. We are so blessed to live here, and you need to look at look at things like that. Like you are so blessed that you have more opportunities living here. It might not be the healthier alternative for some, but it's like I just be waking up like, bro, I'm blessed, bro. Like I be thinking, my I I be think, bro. I started thinking. Thinking. I started thinking my mother like I told my mother yesterday like was it yesterday or today? It was yesterday. I was like mom I'm so appreciative for how you raised me like you really raised me to be an open minded person like and my mom like bro my mom just raised me so well like she just did these little traumatic things to just like make sure I wasn't even acting frivolous like even like it's just the smallest things I even be showing y'all. Like, I need to do that to y'all kids, bro. Them STDs, show your kid every single STD so they're not eager to run. Show them the green bumps, the puss on their dick. That's what you need to show y'all kids. Are you, are you trauma? I give a fuck, bro. They need to be scared of it. Why are you so young having sex? And that's what I was just trying to explain the other day, but I didn't say it correctly. Like, I was saying... When there's a push for younger children to be able to change their body parts, what's going to be the difference if if the government allows a 12-year-old boy to say, I want to be a girl, and, it, and that boy can cut off his dick? Vice versa. What's the difference? You're changing your sexual organs. What is the difference between permitting that and saying, oh, this child can legally have sex since you wanted to change your sexual organs? You're a little kid. Why you want to change your dick in the first place? You shouldn't be using your dick at that age. Now when I say it, I'm wrong. But, gang, I really don't care. <laughs> like, everybody think different, bro. And everybody's raised different. Most likely, if I was white, I would have probably been racist, bro. I don't be around black people. When I see black people, most likely, let's say that, if that is reality. The one or two times I've seen black people. They're fitting the description of the film. Blasting music, cursing, 24-7, illiterate, doesn't know how to just carry themselves in any manner. It's like it's like I'm gonna be like, you fit you fit the exact the exact actual film. I don't really like you. You're ghetto. And that's why my friends don't act that way. Because I want my friends to be a good example of me. And it's like, bro, like, y'all niggas be playing with your life, bro. Like, when I be seeing niggas over here arguing with the cops, who the fuck are you, bro? Like, everybody moves about, situ everybody moves when it comes to, like, situations differently and people want their respect and the cop is disrespecting you and you don't like the way the cop is holding their authority. Bro, when a cop come, bro, I'm yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I'm heading there. I'm not lying. I'm heading here. I'm not lying because I want to go home safely. Y'all niggas wanna stand up and pull out your phone like they still won't kill you. I like my life. Niggas wanna go viral so bad when you come and you, you debate niggas with that. But bro, you have to understand it. I'm trying to go home. I'm not arguing with this white nigga. Careful, don't get canceled. Canceled for what? Niggas be playing with their life, bro. That's why I don't hang out with ghetto niggas like that. As soon as the cops come, bro, 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 relax, bro. Niggas want to come off so tough. You don't even have a blick on you. You don't want niggas to check you. You have no blick. Be niggas with no blick. Yo, bro, you not checking me, bro. Bro, it be niggas, bro. It be niggas with, D with these Adidas sweatpants. Bro, you have no blick. The blick would have been showing. And yellow ups. No fucking blick. What the fuck wrong with people, bro?
No, bro. I li- <laughs> I've been in Canarsie too much. <laughs> I've been in Canarsie too much, bro. <sighs> Gang, I be overwhelmed when I'm speaking because it's just like, I didn't. It, whenever I speak, it's like I be reliving situations, and that's why sometimes I can't get my fully my point fully across. But all I say is, bro, your friends, bro, you can't change everybody. Your friends, you need to start here, um, holding your genuine friends accountable to how they move and how they act and how they um upgrade their wisdom in life. Like niggas don't even want to learn, bro. Like, isn't that crazy that none of us have a a core obsession with learning new languages? We're just so comfortable in our space. Just just that alone. If you if you fully learned three, four languages, you would automatically be open minded. Because when you go to those areas, you're just seeing a different perspective of life. Even some you don't see on social media. And that's why whenever no matter how somebody's talking, bro, I always have to be like I see what you're saying, bro, because I didn't grow up like you. I don't have the trauma you have. I didn't grow up in the neighborhood that you did. Like, social media is done. That's why, like, bro, you be going on TikTok, niggas be laughing at. The, I, that's contradicting myself. Aside from this, the only death I'll ever laugh at, ever laugh at is that um submarine shit. Because them niggas just tweaking with that controller. Like, you... I feel like we're permitted to laugh at that if you didn't care about your life that much. Aside from that, bro, when niggas just be on social media straight laughing at people passing away, that shit be frying me, bro. That shit be frying me. Them niggas didn't value their life, though. And these, what, billionaires? And you were so cheap for that little tiny, that little tiny bullshit. So the acceptance of trans children does not mean that they can physically transition at that age, but it does mean that those children get the space of freedom and time to decide to who they are. The only recommended thing for trans children is, is social transitioning, led by a child's vanta. Nigga, fuck all that shit, bro. I don't want my child even thinking about that, bro. You're gay, you're gay. You're a lesbian, you're a lesbian. You can't wait. It's like a tattoo. You can't wait. You can't wait. It's like you can enforce a nigga, not, enforce your child not getting a tattoo more than that. Bro, wait. You can't wait. I, I, you don't think you might. You might. You might kind of regret it. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Niggas don't want to say that, bro. What's wrong with me saying that, bro? Some people aren't even... You're not even fully conscious. You're not even fully conscious at that age. No matter how you have view things, bro, at 15, 16, you really go in with the flow. I feel like life really hits you. I feel like the only time you really start, like, life hits you is, is as soon as you finish high school, if you don't go to college, or as soon as you finish college. Life didn't, like, bro, like, 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 go play with your toys. Go beat your dick in your room. You, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't need to be acting like that. Jai, what you trying to see? Our conversation going to be... I already know our conversation going to be very long. Um, that actually I saw a trans woman stood at the hospital. She got her surgery done at because she was like 15 at the time. Somebody said L. I mean, I really don't care. Like... <laughs> Ging like ging like do like should I feel bad? I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't treat people bad, bro. I don't treat people bad, bro. What the fuck, bro? And it's so crazy because everything that's challenged in society now was completely normal to your parents. 
That's crazy. Like, I took a gap year. Y'all, y'all seen that bitch that was trying to sue the? What am I? What am I reading? Why is my thing going? What? If you know more, I took a. Well, hold on. You really don't get why anyone would want to be a. Oh, you're talking. I don't know what you're talking about, gang. I'm not even reading that. Let me be specific. Communicate with more people, learn about the way they see the world. It's like a gap year when I tell you I see the world so different. Now, like, everything seems so much heavy and serious. I wish I had this mindset earlier. Play the villa. Play the vid already? Bro, you're getting banned. Fuck are you, nigga. Play the vid already. Nigga, you just came suck my dick, nigga. Who is this nigga? Play the vid already. Nigga, suck dick, nigga. You're salty. Dumb nigga. Attention span. You couldn't even you couldn't even sit for four minutes and just hear the conversation that we were having to maybe think maybe niggas watch the video. <laughs> Yo gang. I feel like I talked enough today, bro. I feel like I talked enough today. I'll catch you guys. I appreciate you guys. This is a very hard topic for me to speak about. That it's because you know you could tell that everybody go through them go through. Um, good night. I'll catch y'all. Join up the Discord, and yes. Oh, mm -hmm.